The river had turned out to be farther away than Tom had estimated, and it was nearing nightfall by the time he and Mel got there. Fortunately, the water was pristine under the thin layer of ice, and was very welcome after such a picturesque walk. He must be more out of shape than he remembered. They both drank greedily, despite his chilling touch. Poor Mel looked ragged. Her injury must be hurting her badly. Tom felt somewhat guilty that there wasn't much more he could do for her. Actually, there was. It just had nothing to do with her arm. It was time to stack some branches up and a crude lean to, so they didn't freeze to death overnight. And a fire too, if he had the time before sundown. As he worked, Tom wondered if male species would even give off warmth like a mammal. He hadn't thought about it in the close confines of the temperature-controlled life pod. Probably not. She was built like some sort of ten-foot-tall insect. It would be a cold and miserable night for him. For the many of time today, Tom thanked his foresight to grab his jacket. Mel watched the juvenile play with some fallen branches while she sat and tried to figure out their next move. The fresh water of the river was very welcome, especially after such a grueling hike. Luckily, the human seemed energised by their adventure. She wondered how it would fare after a few more days' walk to the nearest settlement. Mel thought about looking for food, but between this being a strange place she was unfamiliar with, combined with the fact that it was winter, she didn't like her chances of finding any fresh edible greens. There might be fish in the river, but she had no way to catch them. Human Tom brought her attention back to her immediate surrounds, and pointed to his artwork with the proud smugness of a spawn presenting his brood mother with a homemade gift. He had leaned a larger branch diagonally between the ground and the tree, then laid more leafy looking branches along it to the ground. This in turn was covered by a thin layer of lightly packed snow. It was... a makeshift hab? Tom confirmed this when asked, called it a lean to. Lean or not, the human was smarter than she had initially given it credit for and the temporary hab was just big enough for the two of them. Moving to sit inside the makeshift hab, Mel paid careful attention to what he was doing now, gathering more sticks and making a small tower of them a few feet away. She didn't understand Tom's intent, but it was clear now that the little pink human was moving with purpose. Tom felt like an idiot. Well, more so than usual. He had finished gathering sticks and kindling for a fire, when he realised he had no way to start it, his lighter would be on whatever remains of the ship, the graceful leap. More like ungraceful faceplants, he gestured to himself. But that wasn't why he felt stupid. He just noticed that he hadn't bothered to check his jacket pockets until now. How much a mistake. Hurriedly, he emptied everything from every pocket of all his clothes and took stock of what there was. Not much, but one particular item stood out. His keyring. There were several keys in it, but most importantly, there was a small multi-tool, which had an inch-long blade along its functions. It would be better than nothing. He could use it to strike one of the keys to make sparks. Beltar stopped his flight and leaned against a tree to catch his breath. He felt like he had never run so fast in his life. He had been following the monster tracks when he found it by the river, and saw it for the first time. By the gods, the unknown monster was ugly. It was big, three times his height and covered in strange pelts, perhaps some sort of troll. It looked like no troll he had ever seen, but there was nothing else that even came close to compare it to. Luckily it had his back to him, and there were no sounds of pursuit so Belter was sure he had somehow managed to remain unnoticed. That or the troll plane didn't care. There had only been the one, so perhaps the other troll was nearby. Had they fallen out over spoils and gone their separate ways? Maybe the troll had eaten the other creature. He shuddered. Nothing to do with the cold. He would observe the creatures for a while, see if it still had the stolen metal. Starting tomorrow, of course. Everyone knew not to wander too close to the riverbanks at night, or a Craxis might eat you. Mel was glad for the light of the fire in this strange place, and the human Tom's warmth. When he had first crawled into the small makeshift lean-to, she was worried he intended to push her out to make room, but it quickly became clear he wished to cuddle an adult and then probably fell asleep. At first she was irritated at his presumption, but forgot about it when she realised he was pleasantly warm in her arms. Her instincts were making her protective of the creature. He had held them both so much already, while she was still dazed by everything. 
Tomorrow that would change. She would do better, Mel resolved to herself. A small noise alerted her to movement on the other side of the fire. Several sets of eyes glinted darkly in the night near the riverbank. There would be no sleep for Mel tonight.